ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅವ್ರ್ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾರ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತಾರು ಜನ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಹಲೋ ಪ್ರಮೀಲಾ ಹೆಲೋ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಜ್ಯೋರ್ ಲಂಚ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯೋರ್ ಲಂಚ್ ಯೋರ್ ಯೋರ್ ಫೋನ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಸಾರಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಆ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ I uh, had a late breakfast. I had a late breakfast. I had a late breakfast. I just thought I'll okay. finish and then go and have. Do you want to eat? I just had something lightly. <laughs> light. Yeah, oh, I know. Madam, Namaskara. Hello, Rafael. Namaskara. Namaskara, Madam. ಆಮೇಲೆ ರಾಫೆಲ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ನೋ ಐ ಹಿಯರ್ ಮೀ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಹೌ ಡು ವಿ ಟು ನೋ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅದೇ ನಾವು ಸ್ಕ್ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನೋಡ್ಬೋದಾ ಮಾಡಿದ್ಲು ನಾಳೆ ಡೌಟ್ ಅಂತೆ ಈಗ ಮಧ್ಯಾಹ್ನ ಬರತ್ತಂತೆ ಈಗ ಕಳಿಸ್ತೀರಾ ಅಂತೆ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಅದೇ ಅವ್ರು ಬರ್ಬೇಕಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನಾಳೆ ಅನುಮಾನ ಅಂತ ಈಗ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ನಾ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೇಳ್ತೀರಾ ಸರಿ ಹ್ಮ್ 
जोहानसबर्ग अर्जेंट कल वर्किंग फ्रम मॉर्निंग टील नईट ओनली थिंग्स न गाड़ी बेकु नोड़े साकुअने अंतर्डिंगेनो बेड <laughs> 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 खुशी जयश्री रेखा कल राी मीटिंग <laughs> मै <laughs> मद्वे मुंजी ऊट मे जात्रे कंट्रोल आर से वै ब्लेम दम आल दाइम पाप और जन टू मच आ इंजेक्शन जन तक नानीनो पुटसोमीनो ई शौटेड एट हिम इन द मॉर्निंग सो हम बिट तक टाउन हाल को बेजार बंदगा 
Yes, yes, COVID is very much. That is the reason why many people are getting scared and not taking the vaccine. Kindly uh, unmute because it is going in on live in YouTube. Yes. Pardon? It's uh, live is going on. All will be hearing what you are speaking. Okay. I think we start, Ella, Rekha. Eight hours. Yes, sir. Ah, eight hours. So we can start. Nine, mm both. -hmm. ಹಲೋ ಹಾ ಶಾಂತಿ ಗಣೇಶ್ ನಮ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸೀನ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಮಿ ಟೂ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಐಮ್ ಸೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿನ್ ಐಲ್ ಬಿ ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ಬೈ ಮೇಡಮ್ Hi Rafael, one minute. I am just taking a number from Madam for uh, vaccination for somebody. I'll uh, okay, get back okay. in two seconds after she gets. Can we start, ma'am? Okay. okay. Just for now, let's start. Ma'am, may start. Very good afternoon and warm greetings to all the participants. I welcome you all to this second day online lecture series from the Department of Sociology and IQC of Terizin College and Department of Sociology Maharaja's College. I am Kubinu Pamai from Terizin College. Before we begin with our session, I would like to give you all a few instruction. First of all, I request all the participants to kindly mute your mic. and off your camera please do not share your screen if you have any doubts you can make use of the chat box and lastly at the end of the session you will be provided a link for the feedback with this few instruction kept in mind let us begin our session with a prayer song
something something wrong getting yes you are, you have to you have to unmute no that prayer is not playing okay prayer is not audible please check sis okay no? yeah yeah <clears throat> Okay, there is some network issue, I think. So now I invite Fatima Dilani from Cherizen College to welcome the gathering. Good afternoon to all. I, Fatima Dilna, on behalf of the Department of Sociology and IQAC of Therisian College and Department of Sociology of Maharaja's College, University of Mysore, second day of the lecture series. I welcome Mr. Raman and Professor Indira for the platform to share their and was welcoming ma'am. I take it honored to welcome Professor Anida Vimala Braggs, Principal Maharaja's College, Mysore. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Sister Gladys Castellano, the manager, Professor Annie Matthew, NAC coordinator, Dr. Jayanti C. I Dr. Rafis, Dr. Ashwini Patel, Dr. Jayapal, Professor Gracie Sanvasbi, and Dr. Santosh Naik to this lecture series. I would also committee members, Dr. M. Manjula, HOD Department of Sociology, Dr. R. Gobala Raju, Professor in Sociology, Ms. Dina Mani B. Dr. K. C. Somalada, Mr. Mutara K. R., Dr. M. Prashanda, and Mr. Devaraja M. S. Maharaja College, Mysuru, to this lecture. Welcome, dear teachers. Indeed, glad to welcome the organizer of the Department of Socialism. Welcome, dear. I'd also like to welcome Dr. Sister Prabhula, Organizing Secretary, and Ms. Shebarani, Department of Sociology, Tarishan College, Mars. Last but not the least, I welcome all the participants to this lecture series. Once again, I welcome all today's lecture series. Thank you so much. I once again request all the participants to mute your mic. Thank you, Fatima Dilna. Now I request Ms. Shiba Rani, Assistant Professor, Terizen College, to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Pramula Raman. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a wonderful opportunity to be to introduce our key speaker, Dr. Pramula Raman. She completed her education in Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura, Delhi, and Mysore. She was a graduate from University of Mysore, completed her master's in 1981, and secured doctorate in 1997. She joined the Vision College in 1983 as a lecturer, and she was a jury for 30 years till her retirement. She worked with many sociology lecturers, including Dr. Sister Prasanna, who is currently a HOD of Sociology, Parishan College. She traveled widely in India and abroad, 
She even presented papers in National Sociological Conference and International Sociological Conference in Sweden and Japan. Uh, Madam, I served as a member of state national organization. Madam even conducted several seminars and conference in college. She was a NAC coordinator for Asian College for second national aggregation, where college securing A+. Madam worked with Dr. Indira on the book, Gender and Society in India, Volume 1 and Volume 2. She currently working with Professor Indira on gender glossaries in English and Canada. Our areas of interest are gender issues and dichotomy studies. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sheba. Now I request Dr. Pramila Raman to please take your time. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Good afternoon. Huh. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yes. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Anita Brax, principal of Maharaja's College, and uh, the faculty from Maharaja's College, Rekha Jadav, who is the organizer for uh, uh, on the series of thinkers uh, in uh, sociology. I would also like to thank uh, my colleagues and uh, of uh, sociology, Dr. Gopal Raju, uh, Dr. Manjula, uh, Dina Mani and many of my friends there. Now coming to the Theresian family, uh, it is my home, but without mentioning all my dear family members and friends, uh, it will be uh, incomplete for me to begin my lecture. I uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Sister Gladys uh, Castellino uh, Dr. Sister Rohini, um, uh, Dr. Veena Almeida, principal of the college, uh, my colleague, Dr. Sister Prafula, Department of Sociology, and also uh, Sheba, uh, working in the department. And I would also like to uh, uh, give my thanks to uh, Professor Annie Matthew, NAC coordinator, and uh, Dr. Jayanti. Uh, coordinator IQAC for having me here uh, in this series uh, of talks on uh, contributors to sociology and then this afternoon. And I also like to uh, welcome and uh, give my greetings to all the participants who are present here for this afternoon's session. Uh, at the same time, uh, I would like to uh, extend my greetings to my dear teacher, uh, uh, Professor Indira Madam, uh, and it's an honor for me to be with her in this uh, afternoon session and also to have her uh, in the series of discussions. Uh, I also take this opportunity to extend my greetings to um, Professor Jaipal, uh, then uh, uh, Professor Nayak uh, uh, and uh, Gracie Vasanti and uh, several other of my friends and colleagues uh, who are participating in this session uh, this afternoon. So <clears throat> beginning our talk on uh, uh, August Comt, I would like to begin my uh, brief uh, uh, discussion or presentation on August Comte with the very famous uh, maxim of August Comte where he had said that you cannot understand a subject 
unless you know about its history. And uh, what we are doing in these series of uh, lectures or series of uh, uh, presentations is trying to understand the history of sociology, because unless we know the history of a subject, we will not be able to understand that subject. And uh, to begin with, I would also like to tell you that Comte's uh, full name was uh, Isidore Marie uh, August Francis Xavier Comte. That was his full name. And um, if we look at uh, why he uh, chose or why he uh, wanted to establish this discipline of sociology, uh, we have to remember that he was living at a time when uh, things were drastically changing all over Europe. And it was the end of uh, the Napoleonic Wars. And it was the end of the monarchy, uh, the Bourbon dynasty in France. And uh, it was a rise of uh, liberalism and rise of new uh, ideas. And uh, people during those times, during the period of calm, they believed that there will never be any more wars in the future. Never, I don't think they would have imagined that things will, uh, you know, uh, not be as they had envisioned. But they thought that the future world would be such where there would be industries where there will be trade, where there will be commerce, and there will not be the sort of wars that they had seen earlier. And uh, uh, coming to uh, the discipline of uh, sociology and why there is so much of difference, because any student who, come, uh, who begins to study sociology, first and foremost, will be uh, baffled with so many diverse views about uh, the origin of society or diverse views of different concepts or different aspects of our subject. The reason, as Anthony Giddens said, was that uh, compared to natural sciences, um, uh, where you can very clearly replicate experiments uh, in the laboratories or in the natural phenomena. In sociology, we are not able to, uh, you know, be so accurate and everybody has their different points of view. For instance, we may feel that, as Anthony Green says, why don't we ex explain it in this way? Why don't we look at it in this manner? Why don't we um, uh, uh, um, analyze it in this manner. So there are different views in what we study about as the same thing in sociology because the most important thing is we are studying us. We are studying ourselves. We are studying people. So Anthony Giddens had say, has said that even in the realm of natural sciences, when it comes to theoretical perspectives, there are differences, there are differences. And all the more there will be differences uh, in the realm of sociology because uh, we are studying us, we are studying our relations, we are studying our interactions. And therefore, whenever we talk of uh, the or the discussions on origin of society or uh, theories re re regarding religion or uh, uh, theories regarding interaction. There are so many explanations. Nevertheless, uh, we have to understand that this is because the, the commodity that we are studying is a very complex one. Human behavior, human relations, human life, human society is a very complex one. So when we begin our uh, discussion on the uh, development of sociological theories, as Anthony Giddens said, that very briefly we can say that uh, sociological theories have developed in different uh, phases. You have the early development phase, then you have uh, the um, uh, functionalists, then you have the structuralists, then you have Marxism, then uh, you have, of course, the feminists, then you have the symbolic interactionists. So 
uh, where tracing out the development of uh, sociological theory in this webinar we are restricting ourselves to the first part of the development of sociological theories that is the period of early development and in this period of early development we have few important um, thinkers like august comte uh, then herbert spencer then emily durkheim weber uh, with whom we consider as the uh, you know most important uh, uh, thinkers uh, relating to the early development period and then if you take the uh, the uh, chronology given to us by anthony giddens after this phase, you have the uh, symbolic interactionists of Talcott Parson, and then you have the uh, functionists, and then you have the structuralists, Levi Strauss, then Marx is a very powerful thinker, and then of course we have feminism. So in this webinar, we are restricting ourselves to the early thinkers, and I'm going to just focus on August Comte, and I'm going to be very brief because it's a huge lot of things that he has spoken about. And uh, um, Comte uh, is considered as uh, one of the first uh, persons, uh, you know, who has uh, who's credited with the uh, just um, establishing the discipline of sociology. Of course, there were several others, but prominence is given to Comte. There were many uh, contemporaries, but. Uh, as Madam had said yesterday, some of them seem to be forgotten or some of them are not as much uh, highlighted as in the case of Comte. Now, uh, Comte as a young boy, he was born in April in uh, 1798 and uh, his family was staunch royalists, they were staunch Catholics. And uh, uh, he was a very brilliant child. Uh, uh, and we uh, come to know that he had a photographic memory, whatever he read, he could replicate uh, without uh, seeing uh, those words on, on the pages. And then he could recite backwards, whatever he had read. So that was his brilliance. He, was, he had a brilliant mind. And um, he collaborated with uh, St. Simon and then uh, in his early days and later on, he began to write all uh, on his own. Oh, if you look at the works of Comte, there are two very, very famous works. One is um, uh, The Course of Positive Philosophy, uh, which he wrote in the year... Uh, uh, 1830 uh, to 1842 and uh, this uh, book which is called as the course of positive philosophy or sometimes it's just called as the course uh, it comprises of six volumes and the second um, uh, master work of Comte was uh, uh, the system of uh, uh, Polity, positive polity, a system of positive polity. This was his second masterwork, and um, here uh, he he wrote the, this book. Book, I mean, um, in four volumes, and the period that he wrote this book was in eighteen from eighteen fifty one to eighteen fifty four. Now, if you look at these two. Uh, masterpieces. In the first uh, book, which is called as um, uh, the course uh, of positive philosophy, you have you find his very classic works or his very popular works. That is uh, the law of three stages. That is the origin of society, and then you have the um, classification of sciences. And then in his second work, which is uh, the uh, system of positive polity, uh, you have his uh, work on positivism uh, and, of course, uh, statics and dynamics, so, uh, which he uh, mentioned. So taking up the first work, I like to be brief because you have this time constraint, taking up the first work which all of us are very familiar and all of us are uh, you know uh, rooted into uh, understanding uh, the moment we uh, have become students of sociology we all are familiar with comes the law of three stages so scientific stage now where do these uh, three stages fit in so the theological stage uh, dates back to right from ancient times till 1300 AD 
the metaphysical period commences from 1300 to 1800 and the positive stage commences from 1800 onwards so he also described a theological stage as the fictional metaphysical as the abstract and the positive as the scientific stage now uh, it at the on, uh, onset itself, we have to also remember that this is this explanation of Comte regarding the origin of uh, society is not just restricted to how society emerged, but he uses the same description even to deal with the origin or the development of different sciences and the development of the human mind. Okay, and so he uses this color, uh, this comparison. And uh, one of the interesting things about Comte is he always considered everything he analyzed in threes, in three stages. So this is one of the um, observations made by later day sociologists. And uh, for Comte, uh, if you look at these three stages, the first and the second were very prime to him, were very important to him. He just considers the second one, the metaphysical as, you know, the, a transitionary stage and doesn't give much importance to it. So let's just look into what these uh, stages are uh, dealing with according to Comte. So uh, the first stage, uh, we, which he calls as the theological stage, um, uh, he says that this was a stage, you know, where uh, everything was perfect, it was, uh, um, society was in order, uh, because uh, uh, people believed that everything was associated with God, all the phenomena and forces were operating because of the power of God, whether it was lightning, whether it was thunder, whether it was drought, whether it was floods, everything was the action of God. And they uh, believe that uh, all, all actions and all um, uh, situations uh, um, uh, engulfing their life was all det determined by the power of God. And so they used to worship all these forces, all these natural forces. And, and the first stage, he says, within the theological stage also, he says the first stage was a stage which he called as a stage of fetishism, where they gave uh, belief that even inanimate things like um, rocks or mountains or hills uh, all had life. And so they used to worship uh, these uh, forces there. Then it became very difficult and it became uh, confusing for them. And then they moved on to, um, uh, they stopped worshipping um, all these uh, inanimate objects as well as animate objects. And then they began to associate uh, the uh, surroundings uh, around them, uh, giving them different names of gods. So they began to call the sun god, the rain god, the wind god. So they used to worship these. Uh, so even this was not so easy, it was quite confusing and priests were very powerful and the priests were the intermediaries between the people and these gods that they worship. So this second uh, stage was called by Comtes poly, uh, mono, uh, polytheism. And polytheism also was very difficult and confusing for people. So they moved on to like believing that there is only one God. Okay, that one God, superior entity, and which was the master of everybody. So that is how even within religion, uh, which was the first stage, theological stage, it passed on through very three different phases, the theological, metaphysical, and the positive. And then uh, priests were very, very powerful in this stage. Uh, 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 and um, monotheism came into existence. But after um, monotheism, this continued and priests were very, very powerful. The kings used to listen to their priests and then they moved on to the metaphysical stage or the abstract stage. Now in the metaphysical stage, which commences from 1300 onwards, rationalism began to replace imagination. So in the first stage, uh, everything was based on imagination. I believe that the, this is God, this, is, this has power, so supernatural forces had power and were worshipped. But in the metaphysical stage, rationalism started emerging and it began to replace imagination. And people began to understand that God was not behind every phenomena. They began to question. And of course, Comte says there were the same questions even in the metaphysical stage, like who am I? 
what is my life uh, where am i uh, what is going to happen after death they were, these were the same questions why am i here on this earth these were the same questions that were asked even in the theological stage they continued to be asked in the metaphysical stage but here the answers were abstract okay so that was the difference between the theological and the metaphysical stage and in the metaphysical stage another interesting development took place and that was the emergence of theories principles laws these were gaining emergence the the, the jurists the lawyers they were also gaining um, eminence during the metaphysical state the concept of the european nation state was born and uh, uh, there was also uh, recognition of human uh, rights uh, and the beginning of the, you know the recognition of human rights and liberties these were emerging but we have to remember that the priests still were powerful in the metaphysical stage then we move on to the third stage which is the positive stage and com says we are today in the positive stage we are in the modern stage in the industrial society so he says in the positive stage industries have taken over okay and the world uh, it will will be explained or dominated through by science in this positive stage and society will be dominated by industrialists by industries and uh, uh, trade and commerce and uh, that's why when uh, so when count was uh, thinking about the establishing this uh, discipline of sociology uh, they were uh, um, uh, going through two phases one was uh, uh, the decline of the french monarchy the french revolution and the other one was industrial revolution so they thought that the new world is going to be fully of industry trade and commerce and uh, so he says that we today are in that positive stage where we we are dominated by industrialization production large scale manufacturing and so on and uh, one very interesting thing that com says about the positive uh, period a positive stage is that scientists are going to replace the priests okay and this is what we are seeing today uh, scientists are advisors to all governments and uh, scientists are uh, uh, re replacing the priests and uh, scientists are playing god today isn't it scientists are playing god they are uh, you know moving from uh, Yeah, yeah, right from the uh, Wuhan virus, they are playing God. So they are the ones who are uh, controlling the society today. It's not just uh, the virus. Look at the look at the uh, enormity of this crisis that the world is going through just because of scientists. And today we know that it is a, a virus, Wuhan virus. Very clearly, we can say that. And scientists are also playing God because before the virus came, uh, you know, they were uh, playing gods in such a way that uh, they were also able to, you know, uh, just like uh, we have our designer clothes, uh, they were capable of giving us designer babies. That's how they were playing gods. And uh, when I say designer babies. Uh, you could uh, you could uh, 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 to uh, you could ask for a specific design of of a baby you could say that i want my baby to have such a person's brains uh, like uh, uh, stephen hawkins brains and the looks of somebody else so this was a very frightening area where the scientists were moving on and when uh, they began to do cloning cloning of human beings so they could create a hundred of you if you want yourself to be cloned so they could you know line a list of 100 michael jacksons or a list of 100 uh, uh, arnold schwarzenegger or anybody and when it was becoming difficult and government was finding it that the scientists were going beyond um 
uh, their uh, uh, work, the, the scientists began to move away, move their laboratories away from uh, the government of um, their country and they moved to laboratories on the ships on the high seas because they would no longer come under the territorial jurisdiction of their respective countries. So this was how scientists, are, this is how scientists are playing gods today. And I don't think Comte had visualized that this was what scientists will do. I think Comte must be really turning in his grave, seeing what scientists are up to. You know, there are, of course, the good side of it and also the bad side of it. Uh, because when we talk of uh, Comte, I'm, I also must mention that when we talk of his two important works, the course of positive philosophy and the system of positive polity, the course of positive philosophy is considered as good. So you also have his later day thinkers, they are, they are, they are, um, they consider uh, Kant as one part of his work as good Kant and the other part of his work as bad Kant, especially when he talks of religion of humanity and so on. So uh, I don't think Kant, uh, you know, had a vision, envision that this is how science um, and scientists, uh, uh, you know, would uh, control the industrial society or the scientific society or the positive world. And another thing that Com said about the positive world was that uh, um, traders, I mean, uh, financiers, uh, then uh, 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 then money, uh, uh, people dealing with uh, uh, finances, business managers, industrialists, these are going to be the new warriors. See, the warriors were an important part of the early society, the theological and the metaphysical. But who are the new warriors in the positive state? It is these business analysts, these financial advisors, these bankers, uh, people in the uh, stock exchange, these are the ones who are replacing the warriors uh, of ancient times. So they have become the new warriors. Uh, and Comte also says that in the positive stage, when science begins to dominate, uh, the new order will be one where they there will no longer be a war between man and man. But the war is going to shift from man to nature. The war is going to shift from uh, man to man to man and nature. So that's why he thought, he said that won't, there won't be wars that there used to be fought in the ancient times or medieval times. Now the war is between man and nature. That's why there is so much of ecological destruction, uh, environmental uh, damage, and uh, we are... Uh, fighting with nature and repercussions are also taking place. Now in the positive stage, he said, so there's, when this new type of system evolves, we will have to have a new religion and not go much into that, which we all know, which is called as a religion of humanity. And uh, Comte considered himself a, as the high priest of that religion of humanity. And he had his own set of ideas, how it should work. So these were the things that were associated with Comte's law of three stages. Uh, uh, I hope, uh, that, you know, I was able to do justice in a very short time uh, on this very, very ma mammoth contribution of August Comte. Now, the next uh, uh, thing that I would uh, like to talk about was, uh, talk about is Comte and positivism. So Comte and uh, positivism, is something um, which is also very important. Now, what we mean by positivism is, more, what we have to understand is, Kant wanted sociology to lie on solid foundation, to lie on rock solid foundation. So that is, and that is possible if we use uh, the scientific approach to the understanding of the social phenomena. 
So that is what uh, we have to understand when we talk of positivism and Kant. His basic concern was uh, uh, acceptance of sociology as a science because it uses the scientific approach and scientific method to its sphere of study. So uh, uh, positivism, po positivism here means using scientific uh, thinking, methods, analysis, uh, and that was what uh, Kant wanted to highlight. The po uh, Kant's positivism was so popular uh, that it became a movement. And uh, his, uh, his uh, um, ideas of positivism reigned supreme in the European intellectual circles till the First World War. Uh, and uh, um, the impact of Kant's uh, um, idea of positivism was so enormous that many Latin American countries were influenced by his idea of this positivism. And we have examples of Brazil, Mexico, and Trinidad, where they have uh, taken this uh, um, uh, idea of Kant's positivism in their national flag as well. So Brazil's national flag is based on Kant's idea of order and progress. So also Mexico, so also Trinidad. And uh, after uh, the First World War, uh, you know, Kant's idea of positivism slowly began to, you know, uh, weaken and the uh, Russian revolution never permitted it to come into existence again. And uh, it's only in the last, uh, five decades that again, uh, uh, what Comte taught, um, wanted sociology to be uh, by using the scientific approach has begun to gain uh, interest among the intellects. And um, he, he uh, uh, and the new wave has emerged, which we call as the new positivists or the post positivists. And uh, Kant's uh, early positivism, positivism was considered as has been relegated and has been considered as paleo uh, positivism. And now this neo positivism and uh, post positivism has uh, got to, uh, created in a new dimension, and it is called as the post neo positivism. So it's nice to know that Combs positivism is again is gaining acceptance once again. And the recent uh, work of Bordax in uh, 2007 in his book uh, highlights the uh, importance of Combs uh, uh, and uh, acknowledges the idea of Combs for uh, em emphasizing the need of the scientific method in uh, for the discipline of sociology. So. Uh, now, when we say positive, uh, see, positive uh, uh, means uh, uh, to be 100% sure. So in a lighter vein, uh, two years ago, if we, if we said, I am positive, so it meant that I'm 100% sure, I'm more than 100% sure. But today, you know, I cannot say I am positive or... Uh, 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 or uh, um, are you positive because of the coronavirus? It's better to be negative. That's just in a lighter vein. So positivism um, uh, refers to the need for being uh, systematic, the need for being analytical, the need for uh, being methodical, the need for uh, um, experimentation. So this was what you know, Comte uh, um, highlighted in his doctrine of positivism. And we can say that he was a great supporter of the positivistic thinking or the scientific thinking or the uh, rationalistic or uh, you know, research-oriented thinking. He is a founder of positivism. And we can also, as I told you, because it was a, a philosophy, it also had political undertones where, where it was adopted by the Latin American countries. We can also say that uh, positivism is a political movement also, which was very popular during the second half of the 20th century. Now, Kant advocated the positive approach to the study of society. It's an approach, as I said, that uses scientific evidence 
such as experiments, statistics, and qualitative results to understand the functioning of society. It's based on the assumption that through the positive approach, it is possible to understand the social world accurately. Positivism denotes use of methods of physical sciences, such as measurements and search of general laws to understand society. Now, positivism, as, I, as we can look at it, has two dimensions, therefore. Which are those two dimensions? But the positivism as a doctrine and positivism as an, ide as an ideology. Okay, or I'm sorry, positivism as a doctrine or positivism as a method. So these are the two things. Positivism as a doctrine is what we are seeing, you know, countries adopting this approach, even in the, in the context of nation building, like in the Brazil and uh, Mexico. And uh, positivism as a method is using the uh, uh, scientific measurements and tech tools to uh, assess our uh, area of study. Now, uh, positivism, according to Kant, also has two important aspects. What are those two important aspects? Positivism is not isolated. It's not alone. It believes in the law of coexistence, and it also believes in the law of succession. So when you study or, uh, or apply this scientific approach, it is always in the background of studying the whole. That is what we mean when we say it believes in the law of coexistence. It cannot study uh, any social phenomena, as we all know, and our students uh, know, cannot be studied in isolation. It has to be studied in, with, in co in, uh, coexistence with other factors around us. So it always associates itself with coexistence and also succession. Nothing remains the same. So there's constantly change, there is succession. These are the two also important essential aspects of positivism. But um, uh, Combs said that for the scientific approach of positivism to be successful, uh, you need to have certain conditions. What are those conditions according to Combs? First, he said, you must have feelings and imagination. You must be full of feeling and imagination. So today, you know, you have a sociological imagination, which is coming up as an important area. And then you must have the the criteria, or you have must have the capability to uh, formulate hypothesis. And thirdly, you must have the capability of making predictions. So you must, when you study the phenomena or study in sociology, there must be feelings and imagination. Second, you must have the the. The, the capacity to formulate hypothesis, and third, to make predictions. When it comes to predictions, Comte was very clear again. It, he said predictions, not just about the future, but predictions also of the past. This was how important he considered predictions. And at the same time, Comte said that positivity or positivism had its, has its weaknesses or drawbacks one is that it lacks completeness, it lacks comprehensiveness, and it lacks certainty. What, what, what are these three weaknesses of positive, positivism? Lacking of completeness, lacking in completeness. See, no science is complete. No, and no, you know, you cannot say that this is how much we know, and this is all that that uh, there is that has to be known about a society. Uh, or this is all that has to be known about family. This is all that has to be known about marriage. Nothing is complete. See, uh, everything is changing. Keeps on. Uh, and um, and Comte had very beautifully said that you know your idea of what a particular thing is it rests on uh, the situation of your time. At, uh, today we know that food is still uh, being cultivated, but a time may come 
where uh, you don't need to cultivate food like uh, like in the fields uh, they they may grow food uh, in the deserts as well and another for 40 50 years from now they say you don't need food as you are having today on your table your food will be in the form of just few tablets or it will be in the form of few capsules and that's how you will get your energy so no science can uh, claim or no uh, situation, um, though we use a scientific method, can claim total completeness. And second, comprehensiveness. You cannot be completely uh, clear about what you have know today. For instance, uh, laws of marriage. Uh, uh, these laws are not comprehensive. Today you have LGBT uh, laws uh, of marriage. So in course of time, you may have some other uh, modifications. So neither can they be comprehensive and they lack certainty. So uh, positive uh, uh, approach also lacks the aspect of certainty. But Comte was very uh, staunch in his support for positive uh, thinking. And uh, he had his famous uh, uh, statement on this when he says that uh, prevision and predictions are very very important for a science because you know we have to always remember that he was talking at a time when uh, uh, sociology had to get established had to get recognized and that's how all these things were being put forth by com to make this discipline an acceptable one by the intellects and scholars of his time Okay, so uh, that's why he had said that prevision and uh, predictions are very, very important. And, uh, you know, from, and uh, his most famous statement um, uh, where he says that from science comes prevision and from prevision comes action. So this is... Uh, a brief, uh, uh, you know, coverage of uh, Compton positivism. Can I go forward with the last one, Sister Prafula or Rekha? Yes, ma'am. You can surely move. Okay. No problem. And, and the last one, uh, which I would like to take up, is the uh, is Comp's uh, classification of sciences. Okay, so when we take up this uh, Comp's classification of sciences, we'll have to just go a little bit be, be before that. And uh, of course, Comp has given us this classification of sciences, but they were thinkers, even before Comp, who, uh, who discussed about this aspect. And um, the earliest classification was the one given by the Greeks. And the Greeks uh, thinkers, they classified sciences into three categories, physics, ethics, and polity. Later in uh, Europe, Bacon classified sciences into three categories, memory, based on three categories, uh, uh, sciences related with memory, sciences related with imagination, and sciences related with reason. Okay, now what was the criteria that Kant used uh, to um, classify his sciences? Kant used two important things. One is uh, the law of increasing complexity and decreasing generality and also greater inter interdependence. So he said that you can classify the sciences. You know, there were six fundamental sciences during the time of Comte, you know, maths and astronomy and uh, uh, physics, chemistry, biology, and of course he wanted to add sociology. So there were six fundamental uh, sciences during those days. And uh, Comte classified these six fundamental sciences by using some criteria. These criteria were, law of increasing complexity and decreasing generality. So uh, he put these sciences in a hierarchy, okay? Uh, at the bottom, you know, of the hierarchy was the simplest science, uh, which was um, uh, mathematics. And uh, um, that was followed by astronomy. And that was um, followed by physics. 
that was followed by chemistry and uh, chemistry was followed by biology and biology was followed by social this was the hierarchy the sociology this was the hierarchy that was given by comte so uh, how did he put this hierarchy at the bottom maths then came astronomy then came physics after that uh, chemistry then in biology and then sociology so what was his criteria the criteria that he used was law of increasing complexity and decreasing generality that meant that the lower the sciences in the hierarchy uh, the greater was their generality they were more general and as they went up in the hierarchy they became more and more complex increasing complexity so how did all these six fundamental sciences emerge so concept that emergence of different subjects followed a particular pattern based on what human kind wanted to understand as they gradually evolved so it, it did not come haphazardly depending on what they wanted to know depending on what they wanted to understand these different sciences came into existence so first was maths they worked very hard to calculate and things like that then they used to gaze at the sky at night and uh, uh, look at the stars and so they were able to deduct all the constellations and the different planets and so on then chemistry i mean then physics chemistry Uh, biology and now we have want to uh, understand the society and so sociology has come into existence so during his time the scientific approach was successfully applied to biological uh, life and so comte wanted to divert the attention of the study of social life wanted to divert attention to the study of social life and human society so uh, um, so far people were studying uh, the um, uh, the inanimate world physics and uh, chemistry and then they began to study life so concept now we are getting a idea of uh, uh, the physical the chemical world and also the biological world around us now is the time apt time for us to get a view of our social world so that was how he was you know uh, uh, introducing sociology within this hierarchy into this hierarchy so he says science all these fundamental sciences can be arranged on the basis of their historical emergence or development and so he used a, you know a analysis and he said that uh, these uh, six fundamental sciences where i gave you the hierarchy they can be arranged on the basis of their historical emergence and development so when he puts maths at the base followed by uh, astronomy followed by chemistry followed by followed by physics followed by chemistry and then biology and sociology he says that it is this is the historical emergence of and development of these subjects and also secondly he says that their emergence is also linked to their dependence on each other because each one is dependent on the other one is not independent of the other the astronomy requires maths physics required astronomy chemistry required uh, uh, um, physics biology required chemistry and now sociology requires biology so it was also based on the dependence on each other and next he said the decrease in generality and increasing degree of complexity of the subject matter so as you see the hierarchy you, one important thing that you notice is that the generality is decreasing as a generality as a science is decreasing and the they are becoming more and more complex so this hierarchy is also based on decreasing generality and increasing degree of complexity of the subject matter and also as you see the hierarchy there is also increasing degree of modifiability of facts as you climb higher in the hierarchy you find that these disciplines 
have fats which can be modified also increasingly so the lower the science is in the hierarchy lesser the modifiability of these facts higher you go in the hierarchy of these six fundamental sciences greater is the modifiability so sociology as as a subject and the facts that sociology studies these facts are highly modifiable they are highly uh, um, uh, change modifiable compa compared to the other sciences so this was the criteria that we used okay now when you look at these um, this hierarchy as i just gave it, gave to you you have to remember i've been mean, keep telling it again and again so that we get a clear idea that at the base you have maths and then astronomy and then um, uh, physics chemistry biology and sociology so what was the basis of uh, um, uh, establishing this hierarchy one as they you grow up in the hierarchy they become the subject becomes more and more complex second as you go higher in the hierarchy the subjects decline or decrease in their generality and third as you go higher in the hierarchy there is increase in dependency these were the important uh, you know um, uh, aspects that he was able to uh, link within these uh, six fundamental sciences that he established so the most simple science is at the bottom okay and as we move higher the subjects become more complex so transition when you look at this hierarchy is always from simple to complex when we move from the base to the top so this you know movement from simple to complex you know can also be uh, seen in uh, comes law of three stages this evolution of the society has been from the simple to the complex so also here in the hierarchy so Uh, sciences which are more simple and general develop first so this is another thing that kant said sciences which are more simple and general they develop first followed by the others so as we move from maths to sociology generality decreases and dependency increases now another very interesting thing about this hierarchy of sciences is that he says each subject's birth is based in the previous subject each subject prepares the way for the one that follows so no subject is born out of the blue each subject is born on the basis of the previous subject okay and the uh, the coming of any subject depends on the previous subject okay so um, um so when you look at this we find that uh, emergence is marked by increasing complexity and decreasing generality as we have understood uh, the increasing complexity is there in this hierarchy you look at the hierarchy from maths to astronomy to uh, physics to chemistry to biology to sociology there is increasing um complexity okay uh, and of course as i told you more complex the uh, sciences more modifiable its facts so uh, com says that all sciences also have passed through these three stages even the sciences all sciences have passed through the theological the metaphysical and the positive so it depends on the facts of their study what type of facts that they study if the facts are simple uh, they move on from the first second and the uh, to the third so sciences which are more general and simple and less interdependent reach the positive stage first okay so the more simple the facts that they study and more uh, um, and less interdependent the facts that they are studying they are those are the sciences will that will reach the positive stage first so social sciences that are most complex and most dependent are in the hierarchy some sciences have reached and passed through the first and the second and have already reached the st uh, third stage but com says sociology has passed the first is in the second and is going to reach the third it is going to reach the 
third. This is what he says. Okay. Now, uh, of all his explanations, law of uh, three stages and uh, his uh, religion of humanity, you know, the law of classification of sciences has withstood the test of time. And it is still popular among sociologists today. Now, one very interesting thing is because Comte was a person who just never spoke about just sociology. He was the one who was synthesizing all these fundamental sciences. That is why he is called as a great social philosopher. He is considered as a philosopher of science. He is not just considered as a sociologist, but he is considered as a philosopher of sciences because he wanted to unify all these branches of knowledge. All right. And therefore, his classification of sciences is very popular and it's been um, accepted even today. And uh, Com says that each science did not come into being by chance, but as we know, based on what was the need of the time of the people at that point of time, what were they curious about, what was it that they wanted to know. So that gave origin to these different fundamental sciences. And he first, he also said that though there are all these branches, and one more thing I wanted to tell you now, um, uh, you have these six fundamental sciences, maths at the base and astronomy, and then um, physics, chemistry, biology, and sociology. And then he said the last one is also there. He gave importance to anthropology, that is the study of man. Okay, he gave importance to anthropology also. Then uh, he says that um, each science also has its own sphere of study. Okay, and he said that in order to understand uh, new conditions, new methods were needed, and each science had its own sphere of study as well. So in, he insisted that each science should have the freedom to develop its methods appropriate to its subjects. Therefore, um, he said that um, uh, every, uh, and uh, uh, he said that um, no scientific method uh, which is appropriate to one science uh, need not be appropriate to another. So he believed in the existence of no scientific method which would be appropriate for all the sciences, but wanted disciplines to develop their independent method. So that is how in sociology we have all these uh, new methods of uh, interview, case study, sociometry, um, uh, then um, uh, life histories, uh, oral uh, uh, records, you know, uh, even single cases, which we use because that depends on our subject. Finally, what is the purpose of uh, this classification of hierarchy of sciences? The purpose, as we can summarize, is that it shows the relationship between sociology and other natural sciences. Second, it, it, is, it shows the historical unity of the sciences. He never, uh, you know, put down any science. He said all the sciences are uh, important and all the sciences are interrelated, interdependent, and each one has come out from the previous science. So each science has given birth to the next science. And then another important thing why he gave this hierarchy of sciences was he was preparing the background for sociology. Okay, he was preparing the background for sociology. And uh, Comte was, of course, um, partial to sociology. And he said that sociology is the crowning edifice of the hierarchy of sciences. He said it's not superior, but it brings all the sciences together. So he said that in the hierarchy, sociology is the crowning edifice. Um, and uh, I also want to tell you that uh, Comte, uh, August Comte coined the word sociology. He was a very, very, um, um, you could say, independent person. Uh, he, uh, the word uh, social physics was first used by him, but then it was uh, robbed off by somebody else. And so he did not like it. And so he gave the word 
coined the word sociology. So this, uh, in I think, in a nutshell, I have been able to talk about uh, the three topics that is there in the fourth semester of the undergraduates uh, BA at Mysore University. Uh, I hope uh, I did not take much time. I was within the time frame. Uh, and if there are any questions or clarifications, uh, all are welcome. And uh, I must also thank everyone for uh, being present, uh, Indira Madam. It's such a pleasure to have her with her busy schedule. She's been here uh, listening to the uh, presentation. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's an honor for me and uh, uh, we have learned from you. Yeah, it's your energy that has made us uh, come back uh, again and again to our subject. Uh, seeing you, you know, we have a lot to learn. Thank you, madam, for being with us. And thank you. Dante. Thank you, Pramila, for saying nice things. It's always a pleasure to be with you, with my students. Thank you for a nice presentation. Yeah. Thank you, madam. Hello, Prakula. I'm seeing you just now. Now we have the question and the session. Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for enlightening us with your knowledge. We are indeed very grateful. Thank you, Kubu. Thank you. Dear participants, if you have any questions for the speaker regarding today's topic, you can kindly unmute your mic and ask your questions or type your queries in the chat box. Meanwhile, Pramila, thank you. It was nice. Nice to listen to you, Pramila. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Pramila. I enjoyed listening to you. Shanti. Okay. Here. Thank you, Mama. I'm seeing you in screen now, Lydia. <laughs> mm. so, there is a the question. Dr. Patnaik. Oh, Ma. Hey. It looks that he has raised y his yes, hand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, yes. I have a qu query for uh, Dr. Uh, Premula, ma'am. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, um, I just uh, uh, was keenly, uh, you know, uh, listening or uh, following uh, your words, ma'am. I just uh, have a very small uh, query uh, regarding uh, the positivism and uh, August Comte. Uh, uh, during your lecture, you also said uh, that uh, uh, our idea of uh, anything depends on the situation of our time. And mm -hmm. the comms, uh, you echoed uh, comms uh, for some, uh, uh, it's a contextual thing that you echoed uh, the ideas of comms. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what I uh, feel that uh, uh, it's uh, apparently... Uh, uh, appearing to be uh, fallacious uh, for the reason that uh, you know uh, uh, what uh, uh, we predict uh, for some time uh, does do uh, doesn't uh, stand good for all the time times to come you know mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, the uh, this is falsified and uh, it appears to be an utopian idea and, uh, uh, as far as uh, positivism is concerned, uh, it should be based on empiricism. But I understand that Comte was not an empiricist. Uh, mm -hmm. After the, 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 the scholars who, who uh, followed uh, the positivism after Comte, uh, uh, they, they uh, gave it a different twist. So how do you look at it? Uh, see, um, I do agree with the fact that no science is complete and no science is comprehensive because the world that we live in, as you know, is constantly changing. Nothing remains the same. So uh, that is one of the drawbacks of uh, natural or, or uh, positive sciences, that it can never claim that it has covered everything or it, has, it, know, it knows everything. Because within sociology itself, you can see the very fact that there are so many new specializations that are constantly emerging. Uh, you know, it's an indication that uh, Comte was able to 
point out pin point that and you said that though it is on the need of every discipline to have this approach of science scientific methodology or outlook or you know, perspective uh, you can never complain that even though you are using that our uh, perspective you can never come claim that you have complete uh, uh, you know coverage of your uh, scope or the coverage of your territory that's what i feel okay thank you ma'am uh, and also thanks uh, a lot uh, to professor indira ma'am uh, because i couldn't uh, speak to her uh, yesterday because of the network connectivity issues thanks a lot ma'am i heard you but i couldn't respond to you after the uh, webinar was over thanks a lot ma'am thank you there was a comment from mudi gire that uh, already you are summarized that is 60th volume of comtian philosophy and then same person asked is it scientists replacing priests in india yes yes i didn't get the first part of your question prafulla uh, that is already you summarized ma'am that summarized 60th volume of comtian positive philosophy okay and then the Haan. next question is it scientists replacing priests in india see uh, <laughs> yes quite a bit yes quite a bit but not completely quite a bit ha uh, okay because this person said according to forms we are in scientific stage but no one can ready to accept religion of humanity people till today living in theological stage no uh, so no it's not that accepting religion of humanity religion of humanity was a creation of kant it was a very different uh, uh, ideology of his you know one where we say that he began to consider uh, himself as the chief pontiff of that new religion and he had certain 42 vicars and that was all and he had certain rules for family and women and so on uh, so in the positive sense it's not that nobody is accepting the religion of humanity that's not the issue that was what kant wanted and it it was called, it was there as long as kant lived and uh, it died with kant that that is what we can say but today in the positive stage uh, scientists have and uh, industrialists and financiers and uh, financial experts and analysts are you know holding the key uh, to the society today yeah. so uh, then uh, one more comment from the same person that he said that he agreed rock solid foundation of formed positivism mm. and then a question what happened today just mm. we should think positivism is ultimate aim is the development of human life that means that makes strongness of institutions people giving priority to supernatural power mhm mm i is it a comment or a question comment like that okay okay then one more question from kamala ramana can you explain about the priest involvement the development process in the other country explain can the what can you explain about the priest involvement in the development process in the other country see priest what we have to understand is Uh, uh, priests played a very powerful role it, at two points of time in the history of society. Okay, that was in the primitive, or you know, in the theological, and also in the metaphysical. But in the current uh, society, uh, priests are not playing an important role. They have their role the specific role the religion is still important morality is important morality has to be there religion has to be there but it it is not the paramount power uh, where at one point of time religion and priests were the paramount power but now no longer are they the paramount power but they are also uh, 
living there also exists but they are not the paramount power but there were days when nothing would be permissible unless it was given an uh, uh, approval by the priests isn't it so priests even were ahead above the rulers they were above the kings also but not any okay ma'am hmm uh, no more question ma'am any more okay. question anybody want to ask do we have any more questions Okay. As we don't have any more questions, let us wind up today's session. Now okay. I invite Alfi Maria to propose a word of thanks. Somebody called Sidraju has raised their hand. Okay. Ha. Huh. So before we no, wind up, no, thank you, Rekha. Sumar hoti na to ida do. I saw that. Thank you, Sister Prafula, everyone, and at the region. Okay, please. Uh, Listening to you, Madam. Baba, we, we didn't. I didn't have the opportunity to be your student or Madam student, but uh, I'm very happy, and uh, it is a great, you know, Madam, a wonderful experience of lifetime that I could listen to you. Oh. Madam, uh, usually we listen to Madam's talk uh, many of places. Wherever she is there, we run behind her listening. But uh, listening to you and Raffle sir was very nice, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Rekha. Thank you, thank you. Alfi, can you continue? Alfi, yes, sister. <clears throat> Good evening to one and all present here. <clears throat> it is an honor for me to thank you all on the behalf of the Department of Sociology and IQAC of Teresian College and Department of Sociology Maharaja's College, my Suru, for making second day of the lecture series a grand success. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. My heart fills with a lots of gratitude and respect for our distinguished speaker for the day, Dr. Pramula Raman, for not only speaking their valuable time for us, but for enlightening us with their commendable talk on their subject. Thank you. Thank you, Pramula, ma'am, for clearing our concepts and enhancing our understanding of the topic. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you, ma'am. I take it honor to thank Professor R. Indira for joining us for the second day of lecture series. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to express our I would like to express our gratitude to Principal Professor Anida Vimla Brax, Maharaja's College, Mysuru, for providing immense support to make today's lecture series a grand success. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Veena D. Almeida, Principal, Teresian College, Dr. Sister Rohini, Administrator, Sister, G Sister Gladys Castellino, the Manager, Professor Annie Matthew, NAP Coordinator, Dr. Jane D. C., IPAC Coordinator, for their encouragement and cooperation. I also thank Professor Raful, Dr. Ashwini Patel, uh, Dr. Jayapal, Professor Gracie Vasandi and Dr. Sandosh Naik for joining today's lecture series. I would like to express my thanks to the organizing committee members, Dr. M. Manjula, HOD, Dr. R. Gobala Raju, Professor Sociology, Mrs. Dina Mani, Dr. Casey Somalada, Somalada, and Mr. Murli Dara, Dr. M. Prashanda. And Mr. Devaraja, Department of Sociology, Thank you. Thank you for the valuable contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My sincere thanks to the organizer of the program, Dr. Rega Jadav, Department of Sociology, Maharaja's College, Mysuru, for taking a lot of trouble to make today's lecture series a grand success. I also thank Dr. Sister Prafula. 
organizing secretary and ms sheba rani department of sociology mr sunil and dr hyder ali tereshian college for their technical support and assistance a special thanks to all the participants for making today's lecture series a great success thank you one and all thank you thank you thank you lot thank you bye 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 thank you thank you pramila ma'am this is the first time i have listened your uh, thoughtful presentation thank you very much it was very nice actually thank you dina thank you anita bye pramila bye shanti rekha bye Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, madam. Bye. Bye. Uta madam. Bye, madam. Bye, madam. Bye, from Milan. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, Rekha, Rafael, Shanti. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, ma'am. Bye, sister Prafula. Where is Prafula? Prafulla, your uh, your mic is muted. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Was it all right? Yes, ma'am. Just good. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye to you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I'll be expecting you uh, to be uh, present tomorrow. Okay. I think she left. Madam will be present for all the days, sir. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank. You. sorry okay no okay bye bye thank you madam bye thank you madam thank you bye very nice presentation madam